Son of God say in my mind, and you don't die, give as you receive, and your release is Satan. This is the part 225 in the series Christ Forgiveness, How to Manifest Immortality, Season 2. And the name of this teaching is The Healed Relationship. The Healed Relationship. The Holy Relationship is the expression of the holy instant in living in this world. Like everything about salvation, the holy instant is a, practice, is a practical device witnessed though by its results. The holy instant never fails. The experience of it is always felt, yet without expression it is not remembered. The holy relationship is a constant reminder of the experience in which the relationship became what it is. And as the unholy relationship is a continuing hymn of uh, hate in praise of its maker, so is the holy relationship a happy song of praise to the redeemer of relationships. The holy relationship, a major step towards uh, the perception of the real world, is learned. It is the old and holy relationship transformed and seen anew. The holy relationship is a phenomenal teaching accomplishment. In all its aspects, as it begins, develops, and becomes accomplished, it represents the reversal of the unholy relationship. Be comforted in this, the only difficult phase is the beginning. For here, the goal of the relationship is abruptly shifted to the exact opposite of what it was. This is the first uh, result of offering the relationship to the Holy Spirit to use for his purposes. This invitation is accepted immediately and the Holy Spirit wastes, uh, wastes no time in introducing the practical results of asking him to enter. At once, his goal replaces yours. This is accomplished very rapidly, but it makes the relationship seem disturbed, disjunctive, um, and, and even uh, quite distressing. The reason is quite clear, for the relationship as it is, is out of line with its own goal and clearly unsuited to the purpose that has been accepted for it. In its unholy condition, your goal was all that seemed to give it meaning. Now, it seems to make no sense. Many relationships uh, have been broken off at this point, and the pursuit of the old goal re-established in another relationship. For once, the unholy relationship has accepted the goal of holiness, it can never again be what it was. The temptation of the ego becomes extremely intense with these shifting goals, for their relationship has not as yet been changed sufficiently to make its former goal completely without attraction, and its structure is uh, threatened by the recognition of its inappropriateness for meeting its new purpose. The conflict between the goal and the structure of their relationship is so apparent that they cannot coexist. Yet now the goal will not be changed. Set firmly in the unholy relationship, there is no cause except to change the relationship to fit the goal. Until this happy solution is seen and accepted as the only way out of conflict, the relationship may seem to be severely strained. It would not be kinder to shift the goal more slowly for the contrast would be obscured, and they go, given time to reinterpret its slow step according to its lacking. And they go, given time to reinterpret its, its slow step according to its lacking. Only a radical shift in purpose could induce a complete change of mind about what the whole relationship is for. As this change develops and is finally accomplished, it grows increasingly beneficent and joyous. But at the beginning, the situation is experienced, uh, is experienced as a very precarious. A relationship undertaken by two individuals 
for the unholy purposes suddenly has a holiness for its goal. As these two contemplate their relationship from the point of view of this new purpose, they are inevitably appalled. Their perception of the relationship may even become quite disorganized. And yet, the former organization of their perception no longer, no longer serves the purpose they have agreed to meet. This is the time for faith. You let this goal be set for you. That was an act of faith. Do not abandon faith now that the rewards of faith are being introduced. If you believed the Holy Spirit was there to accept the relationship, why would you now not still believe that he is there to purify what he has taken under his guidance? Have faith in your brother in what but seems to be a trying time. The goal is set. And your relationship has sanity as its purpose. For now you find yourself in an insane relationship recognized as such in the light of its goal. Now the ego cancels thus. Substitute for this another relationship to which your former goal was quite appropriate. You can escape from your distress only by getting rid of your brother. You need not part entirely if you choose not to do so, but you must exclude major areas of fantasy from each other to save your sanity. Hear not this now. Have faith in him who answered you. He heard. Has he not been very explicit in his answer? You are not now wholly insane. Can you deny that he has given you a most explicit statement? Now he asks for faith a little longer, even in bewilderment, even in bewilderment. For this will go, and you will see the justification for your faith emerge to bring you, to bring you signing conviction. Abandon him not now, nor one another. This relationship has been reborn as holy. Accept with gladness what you do not understand and let it be explained to you as you perceive its purpose work in it to make it holy. You will find many opportunities to blame your brother for the failure of your relationship or it will seem at times to have no purpose. A sense of aimlessness will come to hand you and to remind you of all the ways you once sought for satisfaction and thought you found it. Forget not now the misery that you really found and do not breathe life into your failing ego. For your relationship has not been disrupted, it has been saved. You are very new in the ways of salvation and think you have lost your way. Your way is lost, but think not this is lost. In your newness, remember that you have started again together and take each other's hand to walk together along a road far more familiar than you now believe, than you now believe. Is it not certain that you will remember a goal unchanged throughout eternity? For you have chosen but the goal of God from which uh, your true intent was never absent. Throughout the sunship is the song of freedom heard in joyous echo of your choice. You have joined with many in the holy instant and they have joined with you. Think not your choice will leave you comfortless, for God himself has blessed your holy relationship. For God himself has blessed your holy relationship. Join in his blessing and withhold not yours upon it. For all it needs now is your blessing that you may see that in it rests salvation. Condemn salvation not, for it has come to you. For it has come to you, for it has come to you.
and welcome it together, or it has come to join you together in a relationship in which all the sonship is together blessed. You undertook together to invite the Holy Spirit into your relationship. He could not have entered otherwise. Although you may have made many mistakes since then, you have also made enormous efforts to help him do his work, and he has not been lacking in appreciation for all you have done for him. Nor does he seize the mistakes at all. Have you been, uh, have you been similarly grateful to your brother? Have you consistently appreciated the good efforts and overlooked the mistakes? Or has your appreciation flickered and grown dim in what seemed to be the light of the mistakes? Perhaps you are now entering, into, entering upon a campaign to blame him for the discomfort of the situation in which you find yourself. And by this lack of thanks and gratitude, you make yourself unable to express the whole instant and thus lose sight of it. The experience of an instant, however compelling it may be, is easily forgotten if you allow time to close over it. It must be kept shining and gracious in your awareness of time, but not concealed within it. The instant remains, but where are you? To give thanks to one is to appreciate the whole instant and thus enable its results to be accepted and said. To attack uh, your brother is not to lose the instant, but to make it powerless in its effects. You have received the whole instant, but you may have established a condition in which you cannot use it. As a result, you do not realize that it is with you still. And by cutting yourself off from its expression, you have denied yourself its benefit. You reinforce this every time you attack your brother, for the attack blinds you to yourself, and it is possible to deny yourself and to recognize what has been given and received by you. You and your brother stand together in the holy presence of truth itself. Here is the goal, together with you. Think you... Think you not the goal itself will gladly arrange the means for its accomplishment? It is just this same discrepancy between the purpose that has been accepted and the means as they stand now which seems to make you suffer but which makes heaven glad. If heaven were outside you, you could not say in its gladness. Yet because it is within, the gladness too is yours. You are joined in purpose, but remain still separate and divided on the means. Yet the goal is fixed, firm and unalterable, and the means will surely fall in place because the goal is sure. And you will say the gladness of the sonship that it is so. As you begin to recognize and accept the gifts you have so freely given to your brother, you will also accept the effects of the holy instant and use them to correct all your mistakes and free you from their results. And learning this, you will also have learned how to release all the sonship and offer it in gladness and thanksgiving to him who gave you your release and who would extend it to you.